Hello? Wait, do you guys just see my chat like just disappeared? Did you see that? So, what is stability in finding it? I would describe stability as the most, I wouldn't say stable, but that's a little too much, right? As the most consistent game plan you should strive for. No pun intended. Stability is not actually a specific strategy. Stability is actually more about everything you put together. You could argue like risk reward, RPS, and footsies would all contribute to the ability, right? Your understanding and capability of it is very, very important. You cannot essentially be stable without uh, being able to understand all aspects of this. You could you could view stability as like the late game once you understand all the history things. Stability is basically the outcome of all your all your understanding of risk ward, RPS, and footsies. But it's not actually just relating to that. Character strength contributes to stability, right? Some characters can essentially contribute to stability through how powerful they are. So like a great example is if you're a person whose layer one requires you to like you know rps and gamble with someone probably not going to be as consistent as a character that can just like start something in neutral right like just start something usually this is actually what makes a top tier character right usually their options are so powerful they can bypass a lot of interaction and force more of a response or a general response from your opponent right so like let's say beyblade like if you compare it to like, let's say Anji with Fujin, right? Fujin, it creates an RPS interaction, but in different ways, right? So like Fujin, you interact with it by either stopping it or reacting or whatever. But usually uh, the risk reward associated with that is not so bad. Like we've said, usually blocking is not that bad. It's it's one of the like better outcomes. Whereas Beyblade is like, you can't really interact with it purposefully, right? It's like a uh, startup wise, I should say. But if you, like block it it's not so bad now these two things may not seem that separated one enables a game plan way further than everything else like beyblade it's so powerful that usually it forces an rps interaction that can be in naga's favor startup is basically not worth contesting. So this means essentially if you're afraid of Beyblade, you have to like play around it. The option is so powerful that he gets to force an RPS interaction, right? Fujin can also be the same way, the forcing an RPS interaction, but the startup situation is basically an RPS situation in itself. You can see already these two options are not linear. They're not one-to-one. -one. Basically you can cover Fujin through overlap. Let's say you're like, oh, I'm afraid of ONG just like doing far S here and you press the button and he does regular Fujin or even sometimes if he spins it may not even get you something it's essentially an RPS interaction whereas with Beyblade the option is so powerful that essentially you have to respect the threat of the option which enables him to do more right because he doesn't have to do Beyblade like no matter how afraid of Beyblade you are he could just fook you and of course like that can create its own sort of situation right another great example of this is in characters like offense again for example like if we compare Anji offensive rps usually high return on strike low return off throw nago offensive rps high return on strike high return off throw so you can even just see like basically if you view it from the lens of risk award nago's options are inherently more powerful right like they're more stable because essentially your response right so that means maybe more to take the throw, which again, if we consider a strategy from this, Anji's return off throw is like reset the situation. Nago's return off throw is game winning. Characters through like the risk war can, or RPS can be just inherently more stable than others, right? And then of course, this isn't even considering neutral, right? Like neutral, Nago outranges most characters. Anji is a little more mid range. This is essentially how you establish who is strong and who is weak, by the way. You view it along these like this lens. This is why stability is very complicated because it's not necessarily in the lens of like just you and your ability to understand matchups, but it's also in the lens of like how you understand what's happening. Like the way that Anji can force RPS is very strong in other ways, but if you were to, if you view it purely off the lens of like risk reward and immediate outcomes, this is what you get. Stability is actually about tying all these things together and sticking to your game plan. It is not, it's not about how you play 
entirely. If you RPS all the time, like if you just gamble straight up, like RPS, gamble, gamble, gamble all the time, whatever, that's not inherently in unstable. It can be if you don't understand every aspect to the matchup or the interaction. Usually frequent RPS heavy playstyles tend to be slower to develop or harder to be proficient with. Likewise, if you play entirely reactive, you will still tend to struggle. Someone asked, asked uh, Diego, well, El Forte is a weak, but why is he annoying? Because he doesn't communicate with his opponents. All he does is what he wants to do. It's like someone who only talks about themselves. <laughs> this is basically what a lot of people do with RPSing, right? They just force it and they don't think about how you can interact with them. This actually, this playstyle I just described, right? Where like you RPS, you don't consider your opponent's options is usually actually extremely weak against someone with a mild, even a mild stable game plan. Like, so if you play entirely reactive, you'll still tend to struggle because your game plan is linear. In some ways, it's it's funny because both of the ways you actually deal with this are opposites. If you force RPS, usually making interactions more linear around a score is actually how you beat players who RPS all the time. If you just gamble and go all the time and you never stop to see what your opponent does, you just will lose. If you play entirely reactive, it's actually the opposite, where essentially your game plan is too linear and they can essentially take advantage of it by overcomplicating the interaction. It is a conversation. Fighting games are a conversation. They're entirely about how you interact with someone else. If you do not think about how they can beat you or stop your option, you are probably not playing matchups correctly. Like, it's normal, right? Being in this process of like, well, like I, I don't really think about what they're doing, but this works. This is usually a product of you playing a character that covers your weaknesses. Both of how you actually beat both of these options is pretty connected. Well, if I just do this, they'll just do this, which is like, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that, that is literally the point. When I was new, I did not understand this. I was like, why would I do this if they could just counter it by changing how they play? First of all, that's giving your opponent a lot of credit. Like even just what I'm talking about here, there's like a like 10 or 20 people who would probably just like instantly just snap over and be able to, to do this. It's not that common. If you view this in the lens of like, oh, like they'll just counter this, then just counter them back. <laughs> if it's that easy for them to do, why is it that hard for you to do? You will always be at the mercy of like what they do. Sometimes people will panic and just like do dumb shit, right? Sometimes people will never panic and never take risks. If they do not adapt, you keep doing it. If they do adapt, you know that they will adapt and you create a game plan. Right? Live and die with your choices, exactly. You will never be able to like 100% guess right. If you have a problem with that, you need to rethink fighting games because you can't, you can't get past that point. I, I could have had a perspective or like a hierarchy of things that I would prefer to do in certain situations. So like, let's say if someone frequently takes high risk options at me, I'm way more likely to just block. If someone frequently takes high risk options at me and does not vary their timing, I'm way more likely to just choose to gamble into them. This is a very strike throw perspective, but if I had, if I was way more of a, like if I played a set play character, I would probably be more inclined to just, like just whiff punish harder. High risk options at me in a matchup where their risk reward is higher, this is where it starts to get more complicated. The ability is about odds, odds of winning more than directly forcing your game plan in hopes of winning. Usually this is where a lot of people start to fumble. If you cannot be right 100% of the time, you want to be as correct as possible at any essentially high percent. With this in mind, this does not mean go ham and turn off your brain because it's not inherently consistent. It's more about making as much consistency out of as little as you can. A big part of stability is checking your opponent for their weaknesses. As human beings, we cannot omit our like 
preference for things, right? Like we have comfort zones or like areas that we always lean into. I may be more inclined to press 2S, whereas you may be more inclined to press far S in an interaction. That's not something that's like that unusual. If you can get at as much out of them without even showing your strategy, that also contributes to your consistency. One of the most common mistakes is using the air too much in fighting games. Even for characters who use the air really well, you can boil down interactions into risk reward. This creates a linear interaction, right? It doesn't matter how good your like how good your air options are. In this game specifically, if you if you ant here, it's gonna fucking work. It's that good in this game. This is something that is not as common in Exert, because ant hearing in that game was very difficult and you had to essentially ant hearing was a part of matchup strategy. If you neutral jump, right, you there's a lot you can do. It's good. But of course you have to come down, right? Like you can't just float in the air forever no matter what a good example i'm also going to use is straight fire jumps extremely risky because of how linear the interaction with forces is right so like it can boil down to get a jump in and it works you jump in and it does not work but of course like it's still not terrible right because like there is risk around doing it but like if you preemptively jump a fireball win the interaction if you if preemptively jumping is a part of your game plan and they're like well i'm gonna minimize the risk reward because like well you're at like halfway across the screen i like there's not much to really be afraid of preemptively and they just wait maybe they block a mid you jump they answer you right like they didn't they didn't really commit to anything if jumping is a part of your core strategy your core strategy loses to them just watching you there are characters who can take advantage of the air more often than others right? like old faust was a fantastic example of it because he had like one of the best like moves for like jumping in uh even in those situations they did not get immediate risk like return if someone actually called them out they fucking died and especially for Amelia, it was it was particularly bad if they misused pin stability is about taking advantage of risk reward watching how your opponent plays around it and choosing how you are yes from there if i get hit for like 30 damage i don't give a fuck every time if i hit you once and you die and you hit me like 50 times of course i could you could always play a bit tighter on that depending on how good the opponent you're playing is but that is basically a big part of it where if their strategy is so linear that you can kind of like not even get a step out of your game plan and your opponent just keeps throwing themselves at you, then a lot of the time, like that's how I win. So like stability in this case is like, if your opponent just whiff shit, why do anything complicated? Just whiff punch them. A huge part of stability is considering your opponent's options. The reason why you are playing around odds is because you are considering their options, right? The highest reward for the littlest trip. We're gonna end it here, but I hope this made sense. This is basically everything we're leading up to.